Okay, so good morning students. So we have already finished the Proust lesson, A Truly Beautiful Mind, which was about Albert Einstein, the renowned scientist who also got Nobel Prize for physics, you know. Okay, now after reading this story, uh, we are going to do the exercises, okay. So I'll, I told you, so whenever we finished one uh, Proust lesson, the next section you will come across is thinking about the text. You see, thinking about the text. So thinking about the text, uh, what should I say? This is about uh, questions that come from the textbook, okay? So the first section you remember before you read, okay? Now we have finished the lesson and now the first, uh, second section we have is thinking about the text. You have got exercises from the uh, passage. You got it? Okay. Now, the first one is, here are some headings for paragraphs in the text. Write the numbers of the paragraphs for each title against the heading. The first one is done for you. So, you see, now these are the, uh, what should I say, paragraph heading. Okay. There are so many paragraphs which talks about, what should I say, Albert Einstein. Okay. So, what you have to do, uh, you have to write the number of the paragraph. For example, Einstein equation. Okay. Now, this one you will find uh, on pattern number nine. Okay. Now, what about this? Einstein meets his future wife. Remember, if you look at the paragraphs, you will see that it's pattern number seven. Pattern number seven. You got it? Okay. Yes. The making of violinist. Okay. You remember Einstein's mother wanted him to learn how to play violin, okay, and then he became a, a major violinist, okay. Pattern number three, okay, you write a pattern number three. Likewise, Miliver and Einstein mother, you remember, um, Einstein mother was totally against uh, Miliver, okay, their marriage. So, you will find that on pattern number 10, uh, a letter that launched the arms race, you remember, uh, Einstein writing a letter to the American president. Okay, you will find that on pattern number 15. Okay, and a desk drawer full of ideas. You remember Einstein started working in a patent office in Bern. Okay, so he uh, he called the desk drawer the Bureau of uh, what should I say theoretical physics. You remember? Okay, you will find that uh, in pattern number eight. Last, the marriage and divorce, you know, okay, uh, they married and soon after their marriage, they divorced, okay, you will find that on pattern number 11. So, this is uh, the first exercise. Okay, now there are some of the, uh, which we say, questions from the uh, 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 passage, you got it? Who had these opinion about Einstein? Okay, Einstein had got so many opinion by the people. The first one, uh, he was very boring. Now, who do you think said this? Whose opinion? Okay, you remember the playmates. Okay, the playmates, they call him boring brother. Okay, yes. He was stupid and would never succeed in life. Okay, you remember it was his headmaster in the school. He was a freak. Yes, this was the opinion of his own mother, you know. Okay, he was a freak. Okay, now number three, explain what reason for the following are, okay? Einstein leaving the school in Munich, you know, Einstein left the uh, school for good, okay? Okay, yes, why do you think? It was because of the school's regimentation, he was fed up with all the strict rules, okay? Einstein wanting to study in Switzerland rather than Munich, okay, because the school uh, regimentation, the strict, okay, it's very strict, oh, and Switzerland, which uh, was more liberal than Munich, okay, Einstein saying in Meliva and Allen, okay, Ali, Ali means I told you friendship, okay, they became friends, they shared a common interest, that is, they both are totally against the, what do you say, what is that word, huh, the one, uh, the one, uh, the word, which do you say, uh, which we use for people who hate art, literature, like this. Okay, they were totally against 
this type of people so uh, this is uh, the friendship okay what do these people uh, what do these tell you about Einstein this uh, line say that Einstein was very straightforward okay he was very intelligent okay all these things okay you write your own answer what did Einstein call his desk drawer? Okay, remember when he was working in the patent office in Bern, he called this uh, desk drawer the bureau of theoretical physics. You got it? Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, he started working on what you about his uh, theories in physics on that desk. He used to put all the secrets. Okay, yeah. Why did Einstein write a uh, letter to Franklin Roosevelt, the American president, why? On the request of his colleague, because uh, they feared that uh, the Germans, the Nazis would build atom bomb, okay? Yes, because they discovered the nuclear fission, remember? Okay, now number six, how did Einstein react to the bombing of Hiroshima? Einstein was totally, uh, what should I say, saddened by the extent of the destruction, okay, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So he wrote a public message. He wrote an official letter to United Nations, okay, yes. Now, why does the world remember Einstein as a world citizen? Einstein was not just a renowned scientist, he was also remembered as a world citizen because he was thinking for the welfare of the people in the world, he campaigned for the world peace and democracy and he was totally against the arms race okay so people remember Einstein as a world citizen okay yes now number eight okay here are some facts from Einstein's life arrange them in chronological order now here is uh, the life of Einstein it's all jumbled up now what you have to do you have to arrange that okay yes starting from the beginning okay yes the first one do you remember okay yes the first one is yes Einstein is born in German city of Ulm okay so that is the first one obviously and then we have the Einstein family moves to Milan and then Einstein attends a high school so this is not a big deal okay so I want you to arrange this in chronological order so chronological order means according to the year okay oh, yes okay now we are finished with thinking about the text now next section is thinking about the language I told you okay it is about the language that is covered in this particular uh, uh, prose lesson okay yes so let me read this for you here are some sentences from the story choose the word you have to choose the word from the bracket which can be substituted with Substituted means replaced, okay, just like a synonym, same meaning. Italicized words in the sentence. For example, you have to find the word from the bracket, okay. A few years later, the marriage faltered, that is the italic word. Now, you have to find the substitute from the words in the bracket, you got it. A few years later, the marriage faltered. So, faltered means became weak, okay. So, this is the substitute for the word faltered, I mean, they both have got the same meaning. Okay, yes. Now, number two, Einstein was constantly at odds, at odds with people at the university. Okay, so you have to find the substitute of this italicized word from the bracket. Okay, Einstein was constantly at odds with, at odds, okay, on bad terms and disagreement and unhappy. So, it's in disagreement, okay, because uh, he was not that much, uh, uh, what should I say, comfortable with the people in the university, okay? Yes, because some of them are totally against the art literature like this, okay? Yes. Now, the third one, the newspaper proclaimed. Now, you have to find the uh, substitute for this word, his work as a scientific revolution, okay? So, proclaim means declared, okay? Declared and proclaim same. Okay, number three, number four, number five, number six, and then number seven. Okay, so I want you to do all these things. So you have to find the substitute for the word agitating. You have to find the substitute for the word in an uproar. Or you have to find the substitute word for forgot. And 
appeal. Now these are the things I want you to do this. Okay. Now the next part two. Study the following sentences. Okay. Now first you have to study this sentence. Let me read this. Einstein became a gifted violinist, maintaining this skill throughout his life. Okay. That is one thing you have to take note of this. Letters survive in which they put their affection into words, mixing signs with tenderness. Okay, when they exchange their letter. Okay, now after studying these two sentences, let us see what it says. The part in italics, okay, now this part maintaining and mixing. What? In the above sentences begin with ing verbs. Okay, yes, so it begins with mixing, maintaining ing verbs. You got it? Okay. And what are they called? They are called participle phrases. These words are called participle. For example, maintaining, mixing, they are all called participle phrases. So participle phrases say something more about the person or thing talk about or the idea expressed by the sentence as a whole. For example, okay, Einstein became a gifted amateur violinist. He maintained this skill throughout his life. So you remember, okay, this is the full sentence. Okay, he maintained this skill throughout his life. Okay, now I want you to look at this sentence. A major, I mean, Einstein became a gifted, a major violinist. Now, instead of saying he maintained this skill throughout the life, okay, so how did they do? They changed the maintain. Okay, that word maintain is changed into which form? ING form. So, maintaining this skill throughout his life. Did you understand? Okay, now this is an example. I want you to do the following. Complete the sentences below by filling in the blanks with suitable participle clause. You remember? What is a participle clause? Participle clause or verb uh, starting with verb 1 ING. Okay, so the information that has to be used in the phrases is provided as a sentence in the bracket. So, they worked, okay, they work round the clock. Now, this is where you have to work, okay. Try to get the verb 1 ing of this verb, okay. For example, dash, comma, the firefighters finally put out the fire. So, they work round the clock, okay. So, instead of they work, you have to find the ing verb, okay, yes. So, working round the clock. So, instead of worked, we can start by working. So, that is participle clause. So, working round the clock, the firefighters finally put out the fire. Did you get it? Okay. Now, let me give you the second one. Now, you have to pay attention to this sentence. Okay. You try to get the verb and you change the form of that verb. Okay. So, the verb here is notice. Do you see this? Yeah, this is the uh, verb. Okay, she noticed the colors blending softly into one another. Okay, yes. So let me read the first sentence. She watched the sunset above the mountain. She watched the sunset above the mountain, comma. Now notice her uh, noticing the colors. Notice instead of notice, you have to write the uh, participle clause. So noticing the colors blending softly into one another. You have to write the ing form. Okay, let me give you one more example. The excited horse pawed the ground rapidly. Okay, yes. Now here, while it neighed continuously, the sound of a horse. Okay, neighed. Now you have to think of ing here, verb on ing. The excited horse pawed the ground rapidly, neighing continually. You got it? Now, I think it will be easy for you to, to uh, the change this sentence. Number four, number five, number six, and number seven. It will be a very easy. Okay. You try to identify the verb and you get the, uh, what should I say, participle phrase of that verb. You got it? Okay. Now, uh, next section is writing. Okay. So, in the writing section, what do they want you to do? They want you to write a short report. Okay, you you have to write a report, and uh, this is just uh, whenever there is some kind of writing, there are some prompts. Okay, either in visual or 
uh, verbal. Now, this is a verbal. You are given some words. Okay. So, in the report, uh, you should uh, divide this into four paragraphs. So, re your report should be having four paragraphs and each paragraph on this topic, okay, title, for example, okay, one paragraph should be about what was unheard, the other paragraph should be who unheard it, and the third one is what document contain, okay, and uh, fourth one is where it will be kept. So, remember, this is a paragraph, okay, yes, you have to write the four paragraphs, one, one, one each, and now the sample is given here. Your report could begin like this, the title, Students Unearths Einstein Manuscript. Okay, yes, Students Unearth means farm. Now, for example, 21st August 2005, an original handwritten Albert Einstein manuscript, okay, has been unearthed at the university in the Netherlands. Okay, so you have to continue. Is that okay? Yes. Now, the next one is dictation, you see. So, each and every lesson has this part, dictation, where the teacher will supposed to read this, okay, and student will write it, write, okay, whatever the teacher says, okay. So, dictation, we are going to, okay. Now, with this, we have uh, finished with the exercises. So, remember, this one lesson, there are some exercises which covers almost all the skills. You got it? Okay, yes. So, I want you to complete the remaining exercises. Okay? All the best. Thank you.